This is an Xbox One X HDMI port. Physically everything looks great. All of the lines are intact here and if you check them in diode mode on your multimeter they're all within specification. So why do we not have an image? Uh, if you've already ruled out damage to the port, you've tried a new hard drive, there are only a couple other things that might be the issue and I wanted to make this video just to show you one of the more common ones and that is failure of the retimer IC. Now uh, usually once you've narrowed it down to this point that's the one last thing that you're gonna check and there's only so much usually you can do you've just got to remove it replace it uh, make sure you have the right one there are two different versions but there's one other thing I wanted to point out here and that is how you can usually verify uh, I should say quite often verify that this is the problem and that is because when they fail they tend to fail in the same way and I'm going to turn on the multimeter shot here so you can see this. If we put this in diode mode, you can go right in and check this capacitor that's closest to me right here, C50, and you'll see that we've got 0.081. Now that's a very unusual rating for anything coming out of this chip. If you take a look over here at the boost IC, C25 actually shares that same line with the encoder. So I suspect that we're not getting uh, what we need to have here or vice versa because we have a low resistance or excuse me, a low diode mode value there. So I would say I've done half a dozen of these and it always ends up being, at least uh, when I get these readings, this ends up being the culprit. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this just to confirm it and then we'll test it out and you know going forward at least I would recommend this is one of the first things that you check because you'll typically find that point zero something down here is going to be a clue as to what the problem is. All right so this is a I know it's upside down but this is a TDP 158 just want to make a note of that if you put the wrong version on here I do not think it's going to solve your problem.
we go over here and take a look, you'll see this is now showing at about 0.338. And that looks a lot better than what we had before. So the last thing, of course, will be to put the new part on and confirm that that number does not change dramatically. As you can see, there's a little white circle down at the bottom right hand corner. So even if you forget the orientation, they pretty much tell you which direction this goes. And the fun part here, of course, is aligning this and then getting it to stay down. So I've removed the factory solder. There is still a tiny bit in the center. And that, of course, will be the last bit to melt. So we're going to need a, a decent amount of heat. Now, I usually do this with the nozzle on. But as you saw earlier, we get quite a bit more heat uh, you know, in the entire area, which is what we really want, instead of moving the wand around so much, I really think it's easier just to have a wider range of uh, airflow so that the surrounding parts of the board are also heated up. And I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit here so I can see this better. Now you may not be able to see from this angle, but there are shiny pieces along the edge of the chip here that you can just barely see and you want to match them up if you can. Now this is going to shift around a little bit, but once in a while you get lucky and it just stays. Other times you've usually got to move it after it's melted, so we'll see what happens. But I'm going to try this without the nozzle on. Hopefully it'll be easier. All right, so that looks like they're actually just attached. And let's make sure they're straight. And I'll show you something that I learned from Andrew Paul, who also does game console repair videos, quite a, quite a few more than I do. And he's kind of the go-to guy if you have a lot of questions about them, because he's got way more experience than most of us. Uh, if we take a look though, along the edges here, hopefully you can see that these are in fact aligned properly. And now what we'll do is utilize his technique, or at least he's the person I saw do it first. And we're going to put some downward pressure on this while we continue to heat it, just to make sure it's nice and flush with the board. So it's already aligned, it's going to kind of stay in place. And we want to do this so that we're not applying sideways pressure. That is the key. We will just kind of hold down here for a bit and keep an eye on the solder for when it liquefies and then give it a little extra time because that center bit melting is going to take a little longer. Now, while the board is still nice and warm, we're going to add some flux and then just go around the edges and reinforce the connections that we have. We can actually make the pads on the board attached to the side of the chip as well, and then that way we'll be absolutely certain everything is connected.
Now during this process, if the board starts to cool down, you can always add a little more heat, especially if any of these joints don't seem like they're cooperating with you. Now we get this all cleaned up and take a look around, we can check and see uh, what these look like. And from here we'll go ahead and put the console back together and hopefully we will have an image. We have got this thing pieced together uh, just enough so that we can power it up. So you can see the console is basically upside down, so the power button is over here, whereas it would be over there. Once I hit that, we should see the HDMI um, signal switch over to the number one input, and if not, then we have a different problem. So let's check it out. And there you go. 